Hey guys, how's your Shield K9? Today I am going to tell you how to properly use a prong collar. Don't worry, this isn't like the usual videos online. This is how you fit a prong collar. You have to put it here and do this. No, no, no. I'm talking about how to actually use this to train your dog and what not to do. Because that is big. I see a lot of people using these devices incorrectly. All right? This is not a panacea. This is not a magic device you put on your dog and your dog magically behaves. A lot of people make that mistake. In today's day and age, everybody's looking for a quick fix. This is not a quick fix. This is just a tool that either will enhance your ability to communicate with your dog or cause more problems in your communication with your dog. It just enhances what you already have, that basic ability to communicate or to not communicate with your dog. And I see a lot of people really screwing this one up. So, I'm gonna tell you guys how to use it properly. So the first thing you have to understand about the prong collar, okay? It is a neg primarily a tool for negative reinforcement. What do I mean by negative reinforcement? Basically, the, the, the Reader's Digest version of negative reinforcement is creating discomfort, right? And then creating comfort in desirable behavior. So an example would be, you get in your car, you hear that annoying noise, ding, 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 ding. You're uncomfortable, that noise is uncomfortable. You put the seatbelt in the clip, the discomfort goes away. Showing the organism, whatever organism you happen to be training, how to go from discomfort to comfort. That's all you're doing, right? So, I shouldn't have to explain further, but I will one more time. If you use a leash with your dog, you believe in negative reinforcement, right? You want your dog to come to you, you pull on the leash, he comes to you. He was uncomfortable, he came to you, the discomfort went away. You want your dog to sit, you pull up on the collar, he's uncomfortable, he sits, the, the pressure goes away. This is negative reinforcement. The prong collar is a wonderful tool to use in that type of training, okay? But, the reason why I really like the prong collar is it's not limited to only a few types of negative reinforcement. You can use it across a vast spectrum in the negative reinforcement category and you can also use it as a punisher, okay? And there is a time and a place for both in dog training. A lot of people don't know this or understand this or they're emotional about this, but that's the reality. So, those of you wondering, a halty, for instance, is a negative reinforcer. Every time the dog pulls, his head gets pulled sideways, this is uncomfortable, he stops pulling and he releases the pressure. At least that's the idea. With some dogs it doesn't work very well. Um, and uh, you know, it works along the same concept, negative reinforcement. A lot of the positive only trainers for some reason like the halty. I've always said halters are for horses. Most dogs I find really hate that thing around their face. Some of them get the scar on their nose from the halty constantly rubbing. It's, for me, it's, it's too much of a band-aid solution. It's not so much of a training device, right? The prong collar is a training device when used properly. Believe me, you don't want to turn this into a band-aid solution. Because in the beginning, you'll be using it, you'll be like, oh my God, everything's so much better. And believe me, over a period of time, it'll all go backwards in many cases. So if you have a dog who's pulling, maybe in the beginning he won't pull, but then after a while, he's gonna get used to it and he's gonna start pulling you around. I just have a dog coming today. She's dragging her owners on one of these devices. Full power, she's dragging the owners like a tractor on a prong collar. Because they never were taught how to use it properly. And they just put it on and they hope for the best. And unfortunately, that's often not how it works out with dog trainers. So, prong collar is a negative reinforcer, okay? There are two primary ways to use it. Pulling, okay? So if you're making directional pressure on the leash, this is great when you're trying to teach the dog to do something, right? So. Let's say I wanted to train a sit. I pulled upwards on the prong collar. I've created discomfort. The dog offers the desired behavior. I remove the discomfort. Okay? That's a very easy version of how you could use the prong collar to train the sit or to reinforce the sit. Okay? Down, same thing. You make the down pressure. It's uncomfortable. The dog offers the desired behavior. You remove the discomfort. And of course, you can add a reward in too, going into the positive reinforcement side of the equation, but don't worry about that right now. I'm just talking about the prong collar. Okay? So, using directional pressure on the leash. Now, why do we use, you can use, listen, you can do this with a flat collar, you can do this with a choke chain, you can do this with a, a lot of different devices. But the great thing about the prong collar, why I really like to use it, is because a lot of dogs are very desensitized in the neck. They've basically grown up pulling, you know, they've just basically learned to ignore a lot of pressure in the neck area. Right? So when you use the prong collar, the dog is much more aware of pressure coming on and off the neck. So it enhances my ability to communicate with the dog 
and it increases the rate at which the learning occurs. That's why I like to use it. It's a very good, um, it's a very good negative reinforcer. People say it's power steering. I don't like power steering. I don't like that word because it implies that the problem caller is doing things by itself. Only an idiot lets training devices do things by themselves to the dog. I view it as a magnifier, an amplifier. It amplifies my ability to communicate with my dog. Right? That's what a prong collar does. So it's really important to kind of perceive it like that. Now, we talked about directional pressure on the leash, and it's great because I can, you know, lie down, sit, come to me. You guys can see kind of where you can go with it. That's one way to use it. But here's the problem. When you make directional pressure, what happens is a lot of people try to do this to get things like pulling to stop, right? Or to get to correct a bad behavior. They just pull on the dog. And remember how I said this is negative reinforcement. There are some things you do not want to negatively reinforce, like pulling. Because if I'm using negative reinforcement on pulling, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create more pulling. Because I'm creating pressure, and maybe in the beginning, it's enough that the dog does stop, but after a while, they start perceiving this as a pressure, and I'm gonna oppose the pressure, I'm gonna pull into it now, which is why a lot of dogs pull on the prong collar after a couple of weeks, right? So, you have to start to think, uh, another big one, leash aggression, leash reactivity. People pull or they hold the dog back on the prong collar. So now you're creating discomfort, and the dog is showing arousal, you know, reactive behavior, aggressive behavior towards another dog, and you're holding him on the collar, it's creating physical discomfort, it's actually amplifying the behavior, it's not reducing the behavior. That's where the idea that the prong collar makes things worse comes from. It makes things worse when you use it to negatively reinforce aggression. Yes, it certainly does, or leash reactivity, or whatever you want to call it. Okay? So, there are times when directional pressure is good in training, and then there are times when you want to use something we call popping. A lot of people cannot pop a leash properly, okay? Now what I'm doing here, and you can pop at various levels of, 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 of force, right? I can deliver a very heavy pop, and I can deliver very light pops. And depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, right, will depend on how I pop the dog on the leash, right? If I wanted to kind of encourage the dog to maybe, for instance, come to me, tuck, 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 just gentle light pops, right? And when I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm creating the collars, activating, releasing, activating, releasing, activating, releasing. When I just do that, the collar activated and now all the pressure is staying on the collar, right? And it isn't releasing. And that has an impact on a lot of dogs. And again, depending on what you're trying to do, it can be productive or counterproductive. So I want you to think, this is generally for me, light taps on the leash. I call it tapping because I'm going to tap, tap, tap. Watch the leash. It makes pressure, releases, and that happens in a fraction of a second. A lot of people put a big pull on the end, right? And even if they release afterwards, it still is perceived as a pull because that's what the dog feels. The dog feels pressure, release, pressure, release. I want pressure, 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 pressure. Okay? That's how I want the dog to perceive tapping. So usually for a dog that maybe is a little bit slow to get from point A to point B, I might encourage them, tuck, 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 tuck. hey, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Just kind of like you're spurring a horse, go, 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 right? And then there are times when I want the dog to do something, right? We're, we're, we're making more of a directional pressure. Lie down, right? Maybe if he already knows to lie down, but he's a little bit slow, I go down, 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 right? There's a time and a place for everything. It depends on where the dog is in training. It depends on the dog you're dealing with, okay? A big one for me is the leash pulling. A lot of people just rely on the dog running into the end of the leash and hoping that the, the pressure of the prong collar is enough. But like I said before, a lot of dogs get used to it. So what I do is I bump the dog off the end of the leash. He gets to the end of the leash, boom. He gets off the end of the leash. He gets to the end of the leash, boom. He gets off the end of the leash. It's a quick application of pressure. If he stays on the end of the leash, boom, 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 boom. Oh, pressure is released, right? Now, depending on how you're using the prong collar, depending on the dog in front of you, remember what I said, it can be a negative reinforcer. So I could be negatively reinforcing specific behaviors that I want or don't want if I don't know what I'm doing. And I can be positively punishing. So punishment is anything you do to remove a behavior, right? It's anything you do to remove a behavior. And yes, there are many things dogs do that you don't want them to do 
that they find intrinsically satisfying that they will continue to do. So this whole concept of, oh, just train the dog, and magically he's gonna stop doing the bad things. It doesn't work. Most dogs do bad things because they, they actually develop an intrinsic satisfaction from doing that specific thing like reactive behavior towards other dogs, so on and so forth. We won't get into the nuts and the bolts of that right now, because that's not what this lecture is about. But what you have to do for punishment is you basically create a consequence that overwhelms the intrinsic desire or satisfaction the dog is getting out of performing X behavior that you don't like. So for instance, if my dog decides he wants to pull me on the leash, right, and I make a big correction there whenever he pulls me via a big snap, right? It's not, do not pull for this. Big sharp snap, boom, just like this. Look at my arm, everything's loose, everything's loose, boom. And it's very fast, boom, 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 right? Quick, sharp snap, snap, release. The collar hits, releases, hits, releases, hits, releases. So he gets to the end of the leash and he feels good. And now he's off and then he makes the pressure again. Or maybe it's just one big one. Usually I find one big one's good enough, right? He gets to the end of it, boom, okay. I'm off of it, I'm off of it. He starts to feel the pressure now, and he says, oh, I know what this means, and he gets off the end of the leash, right? So you can use it to positively punish the dog for getting on the end of the leash. And I know, yes, you can train this with food. No, you can't. You can train the dog to come away from the end of the leash with food, sure, but again, we live in a world full of competing motivators. And at some point, the dog's gonna say, forget your liver treats. I would like to go and smell that dog over there, and I'm gonna drag you. And now your liver treats, sorry, it doesn't work. I always say, I like to use the money example, okay? There's $500 over there, all right? And I've got $20. Hey, can you come to me for the 20? You say, screw you, dude, there's 500 over there. Forget your 20 bucks. And that's what happens, right? That's, that's the real world. Most people have 20 bucks in their pocket, but the dog's seen thousands of dollars all around him. That's why your dog doesn't listen to you. Now, of course, if there's no money around and your dog sees your $20, again, this is an analogy, guys, of course he's gonna come to you, right? This is the problem with positive only training. You're only trying to use incentives, but guess what? The world is full of incentives. You're not the only one who has a monopoly on incentives. So there are, now we have to levy fines. You get to the end of the leash, boom, I make a big fine. Okay, so now, yeah, maybe you see $500 there, but it's gonna cost you 600, it's gonna cost you 600 to pull me on the leash. You think of it like that, right? It's the same thing for reactive behavior. The dog goes to the end of the leash, right, and, and tries to be reactive. No, and I give him, you know, a heavy fine for that behavior. Oh, crap, I'm gonna get off the end. Now again, like I said, this isn't appropriate for all dogs. This isn't the solution for all dogs. There are many dogs where the prong collar, especially for reactive behavior, is not gonna help you. That's where being a dog trainer and knowing kind of what you're looking at and not viewing tools as a panacea to problems comes in. I'm just telling you guys how to use the prong collar. It's basically, you can use it directionally with pressure at varying levels, and you can also use it with the tapping, right? Or the big sharp snap. Right? You can use it as a negative reinforcer, or you can use it, right? Negative reinforcer, negative reinforcer. No, positive punisher, right? So there are different ways to use this device. Remember, you don't get to decide. Your dog will tell you, right? So for instance, if I wanted my dog to sit, and I'm a little bit ham-fisted, and I pulled up on this collar, and my dog screamed and started flailing around and overreacted and, you know, peed itself and all sorts of things, right? And, and showed a complete suppression. I, I, I punished the dog and created suppression. I didn't negatively reinforce a sit. I probably created a lot of problems around that sit now, right? Especially when I introduce leash pressure. So I always advise you guys when you're using the prong collar, especially in the beginning, go light in the beginning, kind of figure out where your dog's sensitivity level is at, figure out where that minor discomfort is, figure out where major discomfort is, figure out where suppression is, remember, Punishment, we want suppression. So let's say, last part of this lesson, my dog's being reactive and going after other dogs. And I say no, and I give him a tap on the leash that I think is a pretty good tap, or snap, I should say. And he gets even worse, da, 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 da. right? Did I punish him? It was my intention to punish him, but I didn't. I negatively reinforced the reactive behavior. Now let's say I go 50% more strength the next time. So he goes and I say, no, and the dog goes, oh, oh, crap. 
that really sucked and shows a suppressive emotion, right? A suppression, a, a suppressive behavior, um, uh, behavioral expression. Well, now I know I punished him in that instant for that specific behavior. Does it mean it's gone forever? No, of course not. There's other things that you must do. But I'm just talking again about the pinch collar. So, the prong collar has a lot of benefits. But, in the wrong hands, it can be misused. Just like any other device in dog training. Just like the halty. I see the halty misused so much. And again, I don't like the halty, not only because of the nose band, but it, there's less that you can do with a halty. You can do so much more with this device. So I really like it. Uh, just like, it's like a bit in horse, you know, horse training. Yeah, some people train bridle, bridle lifts or whatever. There's different kinds of bits. Some bits are more severe, some bits are less severe. Depends on the horse, depends on what you're working on, right? Depends on what you need the horse to do. It's the same in dog training. I really like this because there's different levels too. Like, you can really tailor it to how much strength you're using, how you're using it. There's two rings generally on most prong collars. By the way, I always use the prong collar. These are Herm Sprenger. You can get them on our website. I always use a prong collar that has the chains, okay? Right, uh, and the chains, just the, the action on the chain, the, the prong collars with the chains versus like the nylon clips and stuff like this, so much better. It really is very springy. Remember, I want the action to go in and come out very, very fast. And the prong collars with the chains, the action is very springy. I like it, it goes in and out. I really want to be able to release the pressure the instant I release the pressure and to make pressure the instant I make the pressure. Boom, 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 boom. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope it kind of starts you thinking a little bit. This is not a panacea. This is not a magic device. This is a dog training device, and it'll either help you or it'll hurt you depending on what you're doing with the dog in front of you. One last thing, guys, just a quick note. Uh, check out our online courses. We have complete online courses on everything from how to train your dog off-leash obedience, competition obedience, protection training, reactive behavior, and so much more. Check us out, shieldk9.ca. You can train with us anywhere in the world for a very reasonable amount of money, shieldk9.ca, check us out.